identify uh, small airway disease. Um, the lecture is going to be you know, heavily based on just understanding the anatomy and some of the uh, anatomical structures that are involved in small airway disease, um, and then imaging, uh, CT imaging to uh, represent that. Uh, at least for me, it, it makes much more sense when I, I have a, a much better understanding of the anatomy and pathophysiology behind what I'm seeing and not just seeing more and more uh, cases of um, CT of the same thing. So um, these terrific graphics I found, yeah, this is kind of a compilation of um, lots of different lectures I found on the uh, uh, Society for Thoracic Imaging site to get some other articles on the matter. So um, obviously these are the large airways. Uh, we're not going to be talking about those today. Uh, we're going to be going into the uh, smaller airways. And the axial pathway of the conducting airways actually extends from the trachea down to the terminal bronchial. Uh, there can be as many as 25 different generations of branching or as few as five. Uh, depends how close um, the terminal bronchial is actually to the um, pulmonary hilum. Um, that might have less generations of branching as opposed to a from the bronchial all the way out in the peripheral lung, which, like I said, could be up to 25 uh, generations away. So um, taking a look at just a single um, pathway in this regard, so you know, we're coming down the main bronchus through a bronchi and the bronchioles, um, which are divided into the membranous bronchioles and the terminal bronchioles. Um, further down, we're going to have the respiratory bronchial and then the alveolar duct sacs and alveolar, which we'll be speaking about shortly. So when we're taking a look at the difference between the uh, central airways and the more peripheral uh, bronchial, uh, logically, um, the difference is going to be uh, the presence or absence of cartilage, uh, which is a defining difference uh, with the bronchioles having no cartilage and therefore just being membranous, um, and uh, not having salivary glands. Uh, rather than having salivary glands, um, the small airways, which are going to be you know, referred to the membranous and bronchial, bronchioles, are going to be lined with uh, epithelial cells, which are uh, ciliated columnar cells, uh, which we're seeing whoop, right here. And then these non-ciliated clara cells. Um, now, these, are, these clara cells actually secrete uh, glycosamine glycans, which protect the lining of these small airways. They have a similar function to um, sulfoxant that we see in the alveoli. Um, and the number of these clara cells actually increases as we go down the airways as the goblet cells, which are seen in the larger airways, which secrete mucin, decrease. Now, um, if anybody had heard a prior lecture I gave in the poster, I actually presented um, at the American Society of Emergency uh, Radiology about eponyms and Nazis. I was just amazed when I came across this one uh, just uh, two days ago when I was preparing this, that the eponym of uh, Clara cells is actually honoring a uh, Nazi physician who was an uh, active party member. He was actually promoted to become the professor of uh, anatomy at the University of Leipzig. Um, and when he discovered the Clara cells, he described it in a paper that he published in 1937. In the paper itself, he actually mentions that the bodies, that the specimens were uh, bodies of ex executed prisoners uh, by the Nazi regime. Um, and what I found those are interesting that in this case, uh, all the major uh, thoracic societies in the US and in Europe, uh, as recently as the, the decision was made in May of 2012, uh, to actually change the eponym uh, from Clara cells uh, to club cells uh, moving forward in um, journals and textbooks. Um, I have different opinions on this. I, I think actually we should, uh, this way we can, might forget uh, some of the crimes of Nazi physicians, but I found it interesting, I kind of snuck it in on this lecture as well. Anyhow, so uh, back to the conducting airways. Um, there, the, the change actually occurs along the respiratory bronchial, which starts to participate uh, in the um, uh, not just conducting, but rather the uh, uh, respiratory process where it's partially bronchiolated, uh, partially alveolated. Um, so on the respiratory bronchioles is going to be a transitional zone where it's mixed conducting and respiratory, uh, which is partially alveolated as opposed to the alveolar duct, which is completely already in the respiratory airways and the alveolar suck, sacs. Um, so where are these smaller structures located? Uh, to get a better sense of uh, where these uh, bronchioles are located and the other components that we mentioned, we have to take a look at the secondary pulmonary lobule. The secondary pulmonary lobule, and this is kind of like a, a blow-up view of this, uh, I think these graphics are terrific and really help um, uh, demonstrate this and conceptualize uh, the secondary pulmonary lobule, which we talk so much about in, in 
thoracic radiology and it's sometimes hard to conceptualize. So they're the smallest functioning subunit of the lung. Uh, they're bound by a connective tissue septa uh, for forming these polyhygonal shapes. Uh, and they're supplied by a single terminal bronchial and a single lobar artery. And they're drained by veins and lymphatics along the interlobular septa. Um, they usually measure between one and two and a half centimeters. Um, and they're better formed peripherally, where we can see them best uh, in their um, polyhydral shape. And they're less regular and well formed um, more centrally, obviously, where the lung is more, much more crowded. And these secondary pulmonary lobules actually aren't visualized normally on uh, radiographs or on CT. So taking a look closer inside, this is going to be the terminal bronchial. As we said, there's just going to be one of these in each um, secondary pulmonary lobule. And branching off of that, we're going to have, in this case, they've cut off the rest, but we're going to have several respiratory bronchioles. And as you can see, there are several alveolar cells on this. This respiratory bronchial is going to lead to an alveolar duct, which is already completely, uh, it's an airway. Um, however, it's completely um, sur um, surrounded by alveolar ducts, which leads into the alveolar sac, uh, where at this point there's uh, no longer a uh, bronchial or an airway, but rather just a conglomerate of uh, uh, alveoli. Um, so we spoke about the airways, and we'll discuss the asthenite in a moment. Um, like I said, there's a single uh, lobar artery that comes through and veins uh, that drain out along the interlobar septa. Uh, we're going to have lymphatics also coming in centrally and draining peripherally. Um, and the interstitium uh, that binds uh, the, uh, that keeps everything in place. Now, as far as the asthma, this is important to understand. What they've done here graphically to simplify our understanding is that they've cut away all the other asthma and have just left one. And that, uh, pulmonary asthenus is actually a, the structural unit of the lung distal to the terminal bronchial. So this is the terminal, this is the terminal bronchial here. This is our respiratory bronchial. As you see, there are a few uh, alveolar sacs on it. Here's another respiratory bronchial. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. So each um, secondary pulmonary lobule is going to have between 8 and 12 asini. Now, each of these asini is going to have um, three uh, respiratory bronchial branches. Uh, which become alveolar ducts and then alveolar sacs. Um, and this is the, the, the smallest distal unit where uh, respiration is actually taking place. Um, in case of uh, inspired barium, um, these plain films and CT images uh, do a great job of just demonstrating all the things that we just spoke about. Um, this is going to be a bronchial leading into membranous bronchial, a terminal bronchial, and here we're going to have a respiratory bronchial leading into the asthenus. Um, this is just a uh, CT demonstration just with aspirated 